Efficiently masking polynomial inversion at arbitrary order is the title of our paper at PQ Crypto. This is joint work with Markus Kraus, Jan Richter Brockmann and Tim Gynesu. And my name is Georg Land. Masking polynomial inversion, why is this important? So in this slide you can see the three key generations of bike and true and streamlined and true prime. And you don't have to understand the details, but I have highlighted that um, there are several secret polynomials that are being inverted. For example, for bike, we have the polynomial H0, which is part of the private key, and it is, as you can see in line 3, inverted during key, key generation. Then for entrue, it is very similar, we have a, a secret polynomial F, which is inverted during key generation. Finally, we also have streamlined entrue prime key generation, where again a secret polynomial G is inverted during key generation. As you may know, bike is part of the fourth round of NIST standardization progress. Entrue might be standardized if patents are not cleared for Kyber. And streamlined entrue prime is already part of OpenSSH as a default. So there's a high relevance for this. And overall, the observation is that secret polynomials are inverted during key generation. But we also know that processing secrets requires protection against side channel adversaries. For instance, usually we try to implement constant time um, to counter timing attacks. But for embedded devices, an attacker may also be able to measure the power consumption or, or even the electromagnetic emanation of a device um, and use this as a side channel information. So in our work, we present the first procedure for masking polynomial inversion, which is already very nice, but it is also very efficient and we can also generalize it to an arbitrary masking order. So from the concept uh, side, um, our attacker model is actually very specific. So all these inversions happen during key generation and key generation is executed once for a secret. Then it follows that uh, the only valid attack is a simple power analysis with exactly one attack measurement. Or let's say in general that um, the only side channel attacks that we have to counter are side channel attacks using one attack measurement. A famous example of simple power analysis has been um, the attack on RSA. As you may know, in RSA um, the secret is an exponent and um, um, so usually we implement this or usually it is implemented with square and multiply where depending on the bit in the secret exponent either a square or a square and a multiply is performed. And you can attack this usually um, by only um, measuring one power trace and then by just visually inspecting this power trace you can already read the secret bits um, from, from the power trace. And a similar attack might be possible on bike entry and streamlight entry prime. So we have to counter this then the standard countermeasure against these attacks that only attack one or only have access to one single attack trace would be shuffling so randomizing the execution order of steps within the inversion procedure but shuffling is highly non trivial and maybe even infeasible for these optimized inversion implementations that are usually deployed for bike streamlined entry prime and entry so masking could be deployed, which is usually very efficient against SPA. And um, also it could be possible to do a, a very straightforward um, masking on arithmetic shares, but then um, it would be required to use Fermat inversion, which would be very expensive compared to the inversions that are deployed currently. And then finally, first order masking usually is sufficient against realistic attackers. Nonetheless, we still consider higher order uh, masking for our work. 
So let's uh, start with a recap on what is masking. Uh, so masking is based on Shamir's secret sharing. And what we basically do is we hide the secret value from the CPU that processes it. And we do this by splitting the secret value up into multiple random shares. And then um, when we recombine this, or if we would recombine these uh, uniform random shares, then we would yield the um, secret value. And for post-quantum cryptography, the usual masking schemes um, that are deployed is Boolean and additive masking. Let's start with Boolean masking. So here on this slide, you can see two Boolean masked um, values. So A and B are both secrets and each of these values, each of these sec secret values is split into two uniform random shares, which we just call A1 and A2 and B1 and B2. Now let's assume we want to secretly um, compute the XOR of A and B. And um, that is actually quite easy. We can do this by, um, by applying the function share by share. So we can just XOR A1 and B1 and yield one share of the result. And then we can also XOR A2 and B2 and yield the other share. So then the result would be two uniform random shares. And if we would combine them, or in this case, if we would XOR them, we would yield the uniform random uh, we would yield the secret value A, X, or B. So this uh, idea translates directly to the arithmetic masking. In this case, we have again two secret values A and B, and um, now they are split into uh, additive shares. So we have uniform random A1, A2, B1, B2, and if we add them up, then we get uh, A or B. So if we now want to um, compute A plus B secretly, then again, we can just perform this on the shares. Um, so this means we have our new first share would be A1 plus B1, which is uniform random. And the other share would be A2 plus B2, which is also uniform random. But if we would add them up, we would yield the correct result. So the observation from this is that when we apply functions that are linear in the masking domain, then this is very cheap. The big question now is, in which masking domain is polynomial inversion linear? And uh, the, the answer to this is uh, the polynomial multiplicative domain. So now we have shares and each share is a um, polynomial and the polynomial product of the shares yields the original secret polynomial. And this is actually a quite old idea, at least the basic idea of multiplicative masking or multiplicative sharing. Um, uh, it was originally uh, introduced for masking the AES S-Box. Um, and yeah, so if you talk to people who are working in side channel analysis, they will immediately say there was a big problem with multiplicative masking, which is masking zero. So you can't really mask zero with multiplicative masking, but this is no new, this is no new problem for us. Um, because the zero polynomial is never um, masked since it is not invertible. So it will never be an input to our algorithms. Then, um, what we usually have is an arithmetically shared or maybe a Boolean shared, but let's say we have an arithmetically shared uh, input polynomial, um, which is secret. And um, in order to invert it, we have to transform it to the polynomial multiplicative domain. So here you can see A consisting of the two additive shares A1 and A2. So that these are now polynomials. So we have a secret polynomial A and two uniform random polynomials, A1 and A2. And if we add them up, we yield the uh, secret A. So to transform, and on the bottom you can see um, what we want to um, yield out of this conversion, uh, namely that A now is the product of two uniform random polynomials. 
Okay, we start by sampling a random polynomial on, and on the right side of the slide you can see the cost of our conversion, which is updated um, in parallel. So we start by, by, by sampling a random polynomial R and then we multiply this random polynomial R with both of the arithmetic shares. So that's uh, two polynomial multiplications there. Then we invert this a random polynomial R and you can see now we have three shares actually and all the shares are uniformly random um, so two of these three shares are additive shares and one share is a multiplicative share now if we combine the two additive shares then we have a new a uniform random share which is our M1 and our inverted random polynomial is our M2 so overall, you can see we for the conversion we have um, uh, we have to sample one random polynomial. We have to perform two polynomial multiplications, one polynomial inversion, and one polynomial addition. Then to invert our secret A, um, then to invert our secret A we have to invert um, each of the multiplicative shares as um, we have said um, in the introduction. So, And then additionally, of course, um, we have to convert back to the additive domain because in the multiple polynomial multiplicative domain, most of the other um, operations are not really possible or not, not really efficient. But let's have a look first um, on these two shares on the right. So what we did actually was we sampled the random polynomial R and then inverted it. And this inverted polynomial was our M2. And now we are inverting it back. So what we actually can do is we can omit these two polynom polynomial inversions. And um, what we get is um, only one polynomial inversion for doing the conversion and the inversion um, combined. And then the only thing that's missing is a conversion back to the additive domain. Now we have to look at invertibility. So um, there are basically two cases. The first case is bike and entrue. Uh, for both of these, um, it is there, there exists an easy way of sampling invertible polynomials. So for bike, uh, the polynomial must have an odd weight, then it is invertible. So what we can do is we can just sample uniform polynomial, then check the weight and correct the weight, depending on our check result. And for n true, just all non-zero polynomials are invertible. So we can just sample uniform. For streamline and true prime, it is very different. So there is no easy way to sample invertible polynomials. And even the shared input polynomials might not be invertible. Actually, in the implementation, the invertibility check is done by simply inverting and checking whether this inversion uh, succeeds. Uh, but the clue is now that we can um, that a uniform random polynomial R is invertible with a high probability. Our solution is that um, we still sample a uniform random R, but in the end we have to do our inversion of R times A0 plus R times A1. And if this inversion fails, then we know either A or R or both have been not invertible. So we have to start over and not only with our conversion, but also with, with sampling a new input polynomial, because we don't know whether this one or, or the intermediate randomness polynomial uh, was non-invertible. Then um, we are in the polynomial multiplicative domain and we want to convert back, obviously, because um, usually we want to work in arithmetic or, or in additive or in Boolean domain. Then um, a, a usual use case is that we have an additive, an, an one additive polynomial, which is denoted here as A, and then we have our multiplicatively shared 
polynomial m, which has been inverted. And the usual use case is that we want to uh, multiply both. So at least for bike and Andrew, the inverted polynomial is afterwards multiplied with another secret polynomial. So um, we can rewrite this like this, actually. So we have the two er additive shares of A, and we want to multiply this with um, the two multiplicative shares of M to yield the product. So what we can do is we start with our additive shares of A, and then we just multiply in M1, which yields again two uniform random shares, which and, and it causes two polynomial multiplications. And then with two uh, other polynomial multiplications, we um, multiply in the second multiplicative share, and that's it. So we don't even need uh, any fresh randomness here. We can also um, generalize this to higher orders, but then obviously we need um, additional randomness and resharing for the intermed intermediate steps. But um, one thing that is very important to remark here is that the multiplication of two secret polynomials in the additive domain would require resharing already for the first order. So uh, this back conversion from polynomial multiplicative to the additive domain is actually um, cheaper than the multiplication in just additive domain. Then we also implemented our approach and um, have performed the side channel evaluation by means of a t-test. That means that we have a, a trace set where we have um, fed the algorithm or the implementation with random data and another trace set with uh, fixed data. And you can see on the left side, if we uh, disable the randomness, then there's a leakage that clearly shows that you can, by observing the, um, by observing the power traces, you can distinguish between fixed and random input. And on the right hand side, you can see with many more traces, with 100,000 traces uh, and randomness enabled for our masked uh, algorithms, there is no leakage anymore. For more evaluation, I refer to the paper. Finally, the big strength of our approach is uh, the performance, actually. So here you can see the results for n true and um, also for the higher orders, but we will focus here on the first order. And you can see the unprotected inversion takes about 1.3 million clock cycles. Now, um, as we have said, um, the back conversion basically is um, the same or even cheaper than the multiplication that would have been done anyways. So we can convert uh, con con um, compare the unprotected inversion with our additive to multiplicative conversion with implicit inversion directly. And there you can see that the first order secure, um, first order secure conversion with implicit inversion uh, only takes 1.7 million cycles, which is just a 35% cycle overhead. And on the other hand, we have also benchmarked it for bike. We did not so for streamlined entry prime, but we have ben benchmarked it for bike. And there you can see an unprotected inversion takes 19.2 million clock cycles on, on the context M4. And uh, comparing it with the first order uh, inversion, basically, which only takes 21.3 million cycles, is only an overhead of 11% which is quite impressive for a side channel countermeasure. So to conclude my talk, I have presented an efficient method for masking the polynomial inversion as a countermeasure against simple power analysis. And I want to refer to the paper. We have also defined another multiplicative to additive conversion that has no implicit multiplication um, also, we have uh, another, or we have a, generally for all the algorithms, we have the generalization for higher orders, um, for higher masking orders. Then I want to remark that we have seen a recent work by Coron et al. 
that shows a theoretical vulnerability of our A2M algorithm that starts from the third order. And this can actually be mitigated with quite low cost, namely more random sampling. And then, as I have already indicated, um, it has to be said that um, higher order single trace SPA attacks are a rather theoretical uh, construct. Um, so for practical security, usually we expect that the first order, um, um, first order security for keygen would be sufficient. Still, for future work, it would be very nice to have formal security proofs of our algorithms um, in addition to our uh, practical evaluation of sidechain security. With that, I conclude my talk and thank you for listening.